Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Five Minute Gaming News, the show that may or may not be five minutes. Today in the news, gaming controversy. No, we're not talking wizards. This time, it's Russia and the upcoming game Atomic Heart, made by the Russian studio Mundfish, which launches next week. And as PC Gamer says, a little more diplomatically than other parts of the internet, Munfish has come in for criticism by some onlookers for failing to adopt what they consider a sufficiently pro-Ukrainian stance in its few statements on Russia's ongoing invasion. And obviously, I would love as many people as possible to tell Putin to piss right off. But in Russia, I imagine it's a very different situation. If you want, please go take a deep dive into all the things going on with the government and the way they're cracking down on media in Russia at the moment. It's scary, it's complicated, and it's not an excuse, it's just a fact. But leave it to Mick Gordon to thread the needle and be a real G, cause this master of amazing game soundtracks posted on Twitter that while he loves the game, loves the team, and thinks it's gonna be great, personally, he will be donating his fee from creating the music for it to the Ukrainian Red Cross in order to use his work as a means to help those affected by the conflict that began when Russia invaded Ukraine almost a year ago. A historical point of order though, some would say that it began in 2014 with the invasion of Crimea, but we'll let the historians sort that one out. Anyway, he goes on to say this invasion was not a decision of the Russian people, but rather an authoritarian regime that disregards human rights and dignity. And yeah, that right there says it all. There's really nothing for me to add to that. The man's right and a class act through and through. In other news, Dead Island 2 exists? Really? Remember the Dead Island 2 trailer? All the way back in, yo, oh, 2014? Yep, it was that long ago. Well, somehow, much like the zombies in the game, this beast has come back from the dead, and in the last few months, we've seen more and more information. And after all the chatter online about how the game was stuck in dev hell, which it was, we finally have a real honest to God release date, April 21st. Sure, that doesn't really change the history of the game, originally being made by the team behind the incredible Spec Ops The Line, it was then taken over in 2019 by Sumo Digital. The question is, when the game comes out, will it deliver the goods? Is there still hype for Dead Island? Does anyone want to play it? The week after, the new Jedi game comes out, so I guess we'll all find out together. Oh, and uh, what's this? Some more Activision Blizzard news? Well, it wouldn't be a week without that. This time, online posters and various sources around the web confirm that the company is future of work planning, whatever that means, that involves bringing everyone back into the office full time. In a statement to Video Games Chronicle, Activision Blizzard said, Activision Blizzard has been returning teams to the office over the past year, and on February 13th, we updated our future of work plans. In close partnership with each leadership team, we customize a plan based on what's best for our business and our teams. Now, obviously, many employees do not want this. In a post by At Least My Hair Is Okay, who said they work for Blizzard, the majority of employees at ABK have no interest in returning to the office either full or part-time. This isn't to say that nobody sees value in an office environment, but we overall decided the risks do not outweigh those benefits. And many people feel this way about office life now. The pandemic put a lot of clarity onto how truly dysfunctional it all is sometimes. And workflow, for the most part, seems to be just fine. So why are companies so eager to get people back in the office? I mean, like, where do we even start? First, you have the buildings. So companies either bought or are renting these buildings. And if no one's in them, they see that as wasted money. Plus you have property managers or people trying to sell those buildings or rent the buildings and now they're kind of out and they're pestering people. And then you have inside the buildings, like a manager, for instance, there's no one to manage. It's like hard to manage people when they're at home. So that job is kind of unneeded. And there's a lot of managers out there. Not to mention there's this fear of uh, like a loss of work culture, whatever the hell that is, but it's a thing. It exists in a lot of different ways. And if a lot of people aren't together, that culture disintegrates and a lot of companies worry about that. There's like a loss of that. I'm sure there are a thousand more reasons, but really it's all bullshit we created. Speaking of bullshit we created, that's right. Head on over to store.jessicox.com. All sorts of cool merch over there. I would love 
for you to buy. Anyway, that's it for 5-Minute Gaming News. See y'all tomorrow.